Well, in the same way that, as of this recording, we're at the transition of console generations, um, Nintendo Power is approaching the shift from the Super Nintendo to the N64, so things are kind of coming out sluggishly. Our cover game this issue is actually an arcade game, the arcade release of Killer Instinct 2. This isn't going to get a home release until the N64. Later's column has some responses to the change in format, along with some additional requests for them not to bring back comics. As someone who liked talking about all the comics, um, I disagreed on that point. The power charts, in fitting with where we're at with the platform transition, we have no new Super Nintendo or Game Boy games, but we do have the top five games from Spain. Okay. Our cover game for this issue is one that is not available in the home. The killer, the sequel to Killer Instinct with a whole bunch of new characters and with the article having all those characters move lists. Again, to call it Killer Instinct 2, this probably would be closer to like a Mortal Kombat arcade revision or a, probably a Street Fighter 2 level arcade revision. Um, revision. From the, re the way things look, there are some mechanical tweaks to the game, some new meters and that sort of thing. But it, again, it feels comparable to like the shift between um, street, regular Street Fighter 2 to Super Street Fighter. So I'm going to hold off on reviewing this until we get the N64 Killer Instinct game, because that's when it came to the home. Now, speaking of games we can review, uh, we have Mega Man X3, the final game in the series to come out on the Super Nintendo, with the recommended boss order, along with notes on where some of the armor power-ups are hidden. Mega Man X3 feels like it is a game that is balanced for people who played and beat X1 and X2. Not in the sense that the actual level design is harder than the earlier games, but more in the sense that, like, Mega Man's health bar is smaller in er uh, than in earlier games that started this one, which means you have less margin for error as you learn on the game stages, which can also mean if you're unfamiliar with Mega Man's moveset or are rusty, uh, you could get a game over on the tutorial level. The game itself is otherwise fine, but with that comparatively small health bar makes for a royal pain in the ass, particularly once the game gets started. We have some additional coverage of Mech Warrior 3050. I've already reviewed this game in a previous episode, so I'm going to be skipping it here. The article is more in-depth in terms of the mechanics and some of the control stuff, like getting into the fact that hangers cause infinitely spawning enemies and that sort of thing. But again, we've already covered this game on the show, so I'm not going to review the game here. It's nice having the expanded coverage, particularly as a fan of the MechWarrior franchise, but the game itself is disappointing enough that I would... That I'm less a fan of the coverage in terms of, of featuring it here. There's either other new games that would have merited coverage or other older games that could better merit being revisited. Now, speaking of new games, though, um, next is Toy Story, a platformer based on Pixar's first feature film with maps of the game through Sid's house. Toy Story, as a video game, is kind of a rough port. I mean, the visuals are nice for the Super Nintendo with some interesting parallaxing stuff regarding um, to give an illusion of depth, not in sense of the usual parallaxing stuff, but in like having foreground and background objects for like furniture and that sort of thing shift to give the impression of a perspective shift. That part's neat. And the gameplay moves very generally very smoothly in terms of the animation. And the controls are, again, generally okay. But where things get rough is some of the hitboxes and collision detection. This particularly comes up in the third level, which is a race between Woody and Buzz, with portions of the level related to using Woody's pull string to swing on hooks and crossing hand over hand on a line, and I had some problems grabbing onto those objects, which made the game more frustrating to play. It's definitely one of the more visually kind of interesting games on the Super Nintendo from like lots of little small graphical standpoints, but again, mechanically, it's enough of an issue to make it rough recommendation. We have a corrected cheat code this issue for the Super Nintendo version of Judge Dredd in the classified information column. Uh, next is Syndicate, another rerun game this issue with more in-depth coverage, including more information on the systems and interface of the game, which would have been nice to have when I reviewed it. I'm getting, This is an example of kind of a game that was better 
suited for getting revisited. I'm glad we're seeing it here. I'm glad we're getting this more involved coverage of the game. We have continued coverage for Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy Kong's Quest, with information on how to get completion over 100%, which is, I get a nice little hidden thing to talk about, since most games at this point, when you think completion, you think, oh, 100%. This is also a dark foreshadowing for what's to come with Donkey Kong 64, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. In Epic Center News, we have some notes on a Metroid roleplay thing that's happening on the forums of Nintendo's official website, which is kind of something that you don't normally think about when you think about companies' official websites. Particularly now. More importantly, there's a discussion of Tales of Fantasia, um, the first RPG in the still-running-to-this-day Tales series, um, from a lot of former staff members of Wolf Team, which unfortunately never gets a U.S. release on the Super Nintendo, or for that matter, neither does the PlayStation version. I believe we do get the Game Boy Advance version, or at least it get, does come out in Europe, and thus is importable in English that way, since PAL doesn't apply to the uh, GBA. Our Breath of Fire 2 coverage continues with some more in-depth walkthrough coverage for the early portions of the game. Nintendo Power is doing their damnedest to get U.S. gamers hyped for Dragon Quest VI, even though this game will never come out officially in the U.S. in English on the Super Nintendo. So we get a big article hyping up the game, talking about the job system implemented for this title, and several other things. Now, the game does get a Nintendo DS release in the U.S., and there is a fan translation of the Super Nintendo version before that, so you can play this game. But it's interesting seeing Nintendo Power leaning into the idea that if you're into RPGs, at this point, the games you want aren't coming out here. And to a degree, the publishers who are going to put those games out, who make it their thing to put out RPGs, aren't going to be putting their games in Nintendo's next generation of hardware either. Square Enix, well, Square and Enix are mainly going to be going to this uh, PlayStation going forward, among various other RPG developers. Our Secret of Evermore guide keeps going and going and going going and going. On Counselor's Corner, we get a whole bunch of battle strategies for Rise of the Phoenix, a Koei strategy game. Speaking of developers who are going to be giving the N64 a miss. We have another Virtual Boy game, possibly our last one, with Nestor's Funky Bowling, um, which again, I believe this is the last game for the system to come out. A whole bunch of delayed Titus games that I've already covered, um, Artie Lakefoot, Prehistoric Man and Sinker Stream are all getting released after some delays due to financial difficulties on Titus's part, so we get some additional coverage to remind you what all of those are and to maybe go pick them up. In the sports scene column, we have three games this issue. PGA European Tour, which is a selection of courses using the PGA 96 engine, and Game Boy versions of NBA Live and FIFA Soccer 96. I'm skipping the Game Boy games because, as I've discussed previously, these genres are ones that do not fare well on the Game Boy for a variety of reasons. And this isn't a case of, oh, they haven't gotten the handle on perspective and that sort of thing for the Game Boy. They've got that figured out. It's more specifically issues with um, like just, just general perspective and how the way these games work and how you plan strategy. That is where the problems come in with them but I will be covering PGA European Tour and we'll see if they fix some of the problems that gave me a hard time with the main game, particularly regarding weather conditions. So PGA European Tour, the good news is they got the weather stuff figured out. The, Or at least they are less prevalent here. I do have like some little swings to the wind, but I never encountered anything quite so dramatic as like rapid 180 degree swings across the hole. So that is really nice um other than that the thing with golf games on 16-bit consoles is because there's a lot of quality of light features that modern games have that these don't for helping you plan your shots um the and because of various issues related to screen resolution things get very finicky and it is always way too easy to hook or slice it is way too tricky to figure out where exactly you, how much force you really want to put on your, uh, on your hits, strokes, but especially with putting. So, as with a lot of gold games this period, I do recommend that you play this in some way, which lets you save scum the hell out of this, so you can figure out 
the meters and your timing and that sort of thing. Still, again, the issues with the wind I had with PGA 96 are less prevalent, so I it almost makes me want to kind of revisit just to see if maybe I just had bad weather RNG, which is still not good, but does make for a more playable game. But otherwise, I'm liking European Tour a lot more. In the now playing column, for the first time in a long time, we have no also rans. Everything that is covered here is covered in this magazine. And finally, in Pack Watch, we have notes for another upcoming N64 game, Wayne Gretzky Hockey. Yeah, really short episode this time, because we don't have a lot of games this issue that we covered. Basically, three um there are like actual new games we can talk about so for my pick of this issue i am going with pga european tour partially by default uh, with the side bit of as far as mega man x go or x3 rather goes the mega man x collection is out there it has save states and all the other wonderful stuff that works for that helps make these games even more playable i recommend picking that up um in fact when I have all my affiliate links in the bottom of the uh, post, you will I will have, rather than the usual eBay link for um, the original games, for that one, I'm probably going to do the Mega Man X collection because just that's a really solid collection of games. So, again, for this issue, uh, PGA European Tour. Um, that said, if you have a device like the Retron 5 or the Polymega, that lets you play Super Famicom games with translation patches, I would consider picking up the picking up Dragon Quest VI. Now, next time, we have Super Mario RPG. So that's a, that's a biggie. And I'm looking forward to talking about that one. So we'll see you then. much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.